regulated yourselves as to how you're doing this, or should we just go clockwise, or what's the easiest? Um, it's a free for all. Yeah. Pretty much free for all. Yeah. Rochambeau. Yeah. We're playing poker. I have the infinity gauntlet. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Right. What, oh, so, go so right Batman. ahead. Yes. What's up? Not much, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just chilling. As it is. It's, uh, this is surreal, by the way. This is, um, I've had a few people, uh, Troy and I spend so much time in a booth, right? Mm. In a little box, and you are trying to do everything you can to entertain people that are behind the glass. And then all of a sudden you realize that, uh, this is going to be a game that is coming out and is well received, well not hopefully well received, but that the, the franchise is so beloved by so, uh, by so many people that you go, oh, that's right, uh, people are going to be interested in this, they're going to ask me questions about that. So when somebody goes, so Batman, what's up? I kind of go, oh, oh, that's right, oh, whoa, whoa, yeah, it's, uh, I'll tell you what's up, it's surreal, that's what's up, because I, I, I see this dork when I look in the mirror and I go, how on earth? To say, that, to say nothing of all the other characters I've portrayed, it's, it's, uh, it's nuts. So, this is a surreal experience. I'm assuming, I mean, Kevin Conrad, and uh, I mean, comparatively to everyone knows how crazy it is, big shoes yeah. to fill. Yeah. But, uh, like, I mean, how was it throughout, I mean, throughout the throughout the day, like, how was it, uh, how did yeah, you prep for the uh, the role for Batman on this on this deal? This uh, as far as prep went, um, there wasn't, I didn't actually want to over-prepare, because I knew that if I was going to be over-prepared for this, I'd probably end up making bad decisions that would be bad choices for both the character, for both the franchise, for the director, for Eric Holmes, and, uh, and so there wasn't a, a tremendous amount of preparation on my part, other than kind of refreshing myself with like Asylum and City, and kind of remembering the gameplay and the, the universe and all that. Um, but Eric gave me a copy of Batman Year One as kind of like a, a sort of a launch point to kind of go, this is essentially the, the tonal sort of element that we want to kind of approach with this version of the game. Uh, but truth be told, I, it, it, as far as preparation, it's like I go in and I've got to be ready to be sort of uh, uh, like a lump of clay for the director. because. If I try to know everything about the game, if I try to know everything about the universe, if I try to know everything about the storyline, I might not be doing myself, uh, either the character, myself, people behind the glass in service, because I'm focused on those things, as opposed to a director who says, okay, so in this scene, here's what's happening between you, here's the timeline that it's taking place in, so we can maybe finesse a little bit of a different performance or, or, or a, 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 an emotive kind of a response from Batman. But, but this is what we need from you right now. And then you go in and you say, okay. And you know, you're like, Joker, now get off. And they go, it sounds a little young. Or, you know, that, you know, okay, Joker. And they go, yeah, a little more chest, or a little more of this, or a little more angry, or a little of that. And you go, okay, I'm going to go ahead and, and try that now. So if I went in, I, I don't know many voiceover gigs where I get to go in in anything, even if it's, a, if it's a new character that hasn't been so iconic as Batman or that kind of thing. Um, I don't, I don't get to go in and go, here's the choice that I've made as this brilliant actor, and you're going to just accept it. It's, it's very much like, so what are we working on today? Like, oh, okay, so he's 23 and out to avenge his father's death, and, you know, there's that, you know, dragon on the hill over there, and he's yelling at the dragon? Okay, cool. And then you do it, and they say, no, younger, louder, faster, funnier, that kind of thing. So, not a lot of, not a lot of prep. And that's what makes it fun, though. I mean, that's what makes the job so much fun, is because you book a job, and you go, don't know what tomorrow's going to be like, let's go in and see what they want, you know? And, but it's just kind of like a kind of like a freestyle of some sort, like from like a, just kind of like you're saying a mold of a. For sure. Play and yeah, and, and I yeah, I love to you know I'm a tool and I, I'm pretty much a tool anyway. But it's like <laughs> I'm a tool to the director, and, and we are all there. I, I mean, there's so many people. This is this is a weird thing. You get to to, to have a tangible sort of embodiment of, of, of Batman and the fact that I am an actor who has played the voice. Right? You can shake my hand. But there are 150 people back at Warner Brothers Montreal that were working on this game. They are just as much responsible, in fact, more so than I am, for the character. Because it's that image, it's the lighting, it's the music, it's the it's all that that makes up Batman. If, if Batman looked like Pikachu, and even if you tried to make him, it, it's like it just wouldn't have the same thing. But Batman is the character. Playing the voice is nice. It's about, in my opinion, maybe 5% of, the, of what makes Batman who he is. The writing, the directing, the, all those things play into it. And uh, so it's a trip to kind of have people go like, you know, so what's it like? And you go, I really don't know. I, I, I'm doing what I do and I do my job and I hope everybody responds to it well uh, because it's, it's not lost on us, you know, the, the, the opportunity to play an iconic character like this. But gosh, I just want to do right by this character. And I think every actor that's ever taken on a role that's like this thinks the same thing. Hopefully. Right. Hopefully. 
I yep. just uh, just basically between uh, you, I'm not. I don't. I don't want to compare you to Mark. I don't want to compare you to Kevin Conroy because you're your own voice and it's your own thing. But a lot of the times when Kevin and Conroy do the B Batman and the Joker, we can tell that their relationship between each other yep. is so great. They bounce off each other so well yeah, yeah. between their context. Yep. So do you feel that you and Troy have that same relationship, or do you feel like it's something? That Without spoiling anything, considering that this is a prequel and we're we're it's not as defined. I mean, that's the best part about this is this is a, a less refined, a less defined Batman, and and he's kind of being introduced to a lot of these characters for the first time. So that banter, I'm not going to say whether or not it's there. I'm not going to say whether or not it's uh, as as we've known it in, in previous iterations of the game. Um, I think one could safely assume that I mean we're going to be it's going to be a. Oh, so that's what this is all about. Or, oh, that's why their banter is the way it is. Or that's why he's so obsessed with Batman. Or that's why, you know, you just go, it's it's us sort of introducing the backstory a little bit. Which is, uh, I think if that, if that was already there, that'd be kind of weird, right? Yeah. Because you'd be like, wait a minute, two people meet each other and all of a sudden they're riffing that, you know, that quickly? That doesn't make any sense. That's, try not to give away too much. That's what it is. From a, from a voice actor yes. perspective, uh, which, because uh, I suppose there's dialogue and you fight the villains, mm -hmm. like which villain was the most exciting about where we were going with the dialogue? Um, I, again, like, Trey and I are trying to be so protective of this game until it comes out because of the fact that we want everybody to, ex I want to experience it. I don't even remember half the stuff I did because we do so many takes and versions of things and it's like, you never know what it's going to be when it's in its polished form. All of them were a blast. <laughs> um, like, what was, what's, what's your personal favorite Batman? I'm, I only ask because Batman villains yeah. are loved as a core component of the Batman. Villains. Of course, so, I mean, that's what. That's one of the reasons too why I say like this is, in my opinion, this is much more Troy's game than anybody else because it's yeah. just that. I mean, I don't know the Joker. Everybody loves the bad guy. I mean, everybody loves. <laughs> for me, uh, the Disney movie that I was in, uh, Reef Plains, where I got to be a bad guy. It was a Disney villain, and it was the coolest thing ever. Because it's like, you're a bad guy. Everybody wants to be Darth. You know what I mean? I'm sorry. I mean, Luke Skywalker's great. No offense to Mark Hamill. But it's, uh, it's uh, I mean, the bad guys are always more exciting. So, yeah, I, I, uh, I've, I've said it this way. Batman kind of lives here, and we want him to. We need him to. If he started going off in different directions, you'd be like, that, that's against the character that we know, that we love. The villains have a little more creative room, which can also be a good or a bad thing, because you can take a performance too cartoony or that kind of thing. And what Troy does in this performance is so deliciously bone-chillingly evil, but you still love him because you're just like, it's the joke. I mean, it's, I mean, it's the same with Heath Ledger's performance. You just went, my God, is that ever crazy? But I think there's like a... I don't know. I wonder if in, inside all of us, if there's a little bit of an element of like, man, life with no rules would be kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily a, a, a wonderful life, but it would be very interesting. So I, I um, as far as Batman having his best moment with a particular villain, I don't know. I, I, I couldn't really pick a favorite. I'll say Troy. Right off the <laughs> yeah, getting to fight Troy Baker is more fun than anything else. But oh, yeah. uh, so some people believe that uh, you know Batman is the real. Or Bruce, and Bruce is just the mask. Mm. Now, in your take, mm -hmm. did you feel that way? And if so, or if not, what was the moment that that clicked for you? The moment of Batman or Bruce? That's kind of what this entire game is sort of all about, in a lot of ways, in my opinion. It's, 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 it, it is us trying to, or Batman trying to figure out what is it that makes me tick, right? What, you know, and what lessons am I going to learn about myself along the path? Um, for me personally, one of, the, one of the neatest things about the character of Batman is just simply that at, at his core, he wants to do the right thing. And yet it's a subjective thing because I'm sure, you know, Gordon doesn't think that he's, op he's, he's operating outside the law and therefore he's a, he's a criminal. And, uh, and I'm sure a lot of people in society might be like, he's our hero, but there's other people like, you know, the villains that, that all think, no, he's, he's terrible. So for me personally, I think... I don't know. I, th I think I think Bruce Wayne is the guy that uh, that is at all times present underneath that cowl. But because he knows who he is and how others may perceive him, that if he was to be anything other than that, it wouldn't it wouldn't do it wouldn't be anywhere near as intimidating. It wouldn't do. 
how could you how could he go out and actually stop things by crime if he wasn't this other entity? So I don't know. Does that satisfy the answer? It's like to me, I, I I always feel like there's just this element of Bruce Wayne in everything because again, this is a guy who's been tortured by the death of his family, and that is inherently one of these motivational factors for him to to never let. I mean, he was in the last one, you know. Even 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 a, a I forget the exact line, but with. Uh, even when a young boy needs comforting and, and, and somebody just gives him a jacket. That that says so much about what he's doing because he never forgot that and wanted to go out and make a difference in the world by making sure that and somebody no, else would have that same opportunity. Yeah. So to me, it's always a, kind of a Bruce Wayne story with, you know, a guy with a mask on. Uh, what do you think? Good enough? <laughs> or decent answer? Really <laughs> Um, Are we? Yeah, we're gonna. Do I need to? I need the jet. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Sorry, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, you so much. Thanks very much. Enjoy the rest of the day there.